Hello, everyone. Richie Carlton. Welcome to another awesome day oh, of FileMaker Training. We are here at fmtrain.tv where we every day are shooting a live stream video on the FileMaker platform. Very exciting, right? We're here because every day we're learning something new about the FileMaker platform, how to make it better for our organization or whoever you are servicing with your low-code applications. Ooh, yes, yeah, the fancy new word, low-code. Yeah, so low-code applications today is a little bit more... Uh, kind of low code, but it's heading into the area of kind of pro code, kind of pro code ish. And so today is a much more exciting broadcast. Uh, before we get into today's broadcast, I want to show you the upcoming broadcast schedule here. So this right here is the schedule. You can go to fmtrain.tv, scroll down. You can see that today is Kyle Williams. We're talking about uh, rich text editors, basically little baby word processors that live in your FileMaker application. Then July 4th is Sunday. But Monday is July 5th, and that's kind of the officially recognized holiday for uh, in the USA. Um, kind of like Christmas. They take it kind of seriously. So uh, then on Tuesday, you get the image gallery shenanigans with Nick Hunter. I did talk to him today. He seems reasonably happy. Um, so that's good. He'll be here Tuesday and Wednesday next week. Then Thursday next week, Jake Sheely will be around, assuming we can find him and, and pry him out from whatever rock he's hiding under. That will be exciting. And then uh, Kyle Williams will be back next Friday as well. So we lined him up for a couple broadcast days. Uh, and he's how to hack scripts and objects. I'm not sure what that's about, but my team reviewed it and decided it was uh, useful or something. So it should be interesting. So that's more of a pro code hacky thing. This is probably a low code to medium code. And then Nick always starts basic and then he ends up being like super crazy kind of, it's low code, but it's extre it's kind of extreme, extreme low code. I don't even call that extreme low code, but yeah, because cause Nick doesn't really like to code in other languages and stuff as a general rule. So he never really gets to pro code yet. It has that level of complexity. So kind of an interesting com uh, combination. So this live stream, if you're here, you can ask questions. We encourage you to do that. We are broadcasting in high definition to Discord, Twitch, and YouTube. So this is the upcoming broadcast schedule. As a reminder, if you're on this page right here, uh, you can hit, press the bundles button. It's really important to ask. I ask you on this, but it's, it's important to ask for your business. This is a free channel. We do free things here. We give you free, uh, free things all the time. As a result, we do need to generate a little bit of revenue to keep the lights on. That's why we have our dedicated video training courses that are all here. We've got great courses on the FileMaker platform, 90 plus hours of content. So you can pick the topic you want. So on a live stream, you go to YouTube, it's really hard to find a topic that you that you really want. Yeah, you know, like you want to learn about script trigger or something like that, you can search on it. But it's, if it's on YouTube, someone said, everything I learned about FileMaker, I learned on YouTube. I said, well then, and the person's still kind of like a beginning developer. I'm like, you're going to have a hard time with that because YouTube is really good for cat videos and Russians driving drunk and stuff like that. But in terms of a coherent training, you need this stuff over here. Another person uh, this last week said, hey, it'd be really great if Claris did this training and not Richard Carlton. And, and of course, that was like, it's like, it'd be upwards of $2 million to reproduce all the training. It's a lot of training, like upwards of 100 hours. And Claris to do that, yeah, I, I'm pretty sure they could think of other things to spend $2 million on. So, uh, including DevCon for next year and things like that. So anyway, if you would like to purchase a course, we bundle them all together in one place right here, very inexpensively. We really appreciate the support on that, right? Uh, Claris does have some training. It's about five, four or five hours of video training. It's not very much, very lightweight. Um, that's why people come here. Oregon Dean says he re-upped at full price. It's worth every penny. Um, yeah, the, the cost on a per hour, an hour of training in there costs you about two or three bucks. It's very cheap, very, very cheap. So moving along today to Kyle Williams. So before I flip Kyle on the full screen, let's talk about the content for today. Today's content, yesterday's content was kind of on the broad spectrum it was kind of kind of beginner content but not really claris is, is looking for feedback from intermediate and advanced people and there's reasons for this and so yesterday was in here if you make a video that we talked about yesterday if you make a video and you want me to pass it claris we do the review even if you're stumbling around especially if you're stumbling around they need to hear that if you just go through it and everything's perfect and fantastic and you love it then don't bother with the video but if you make a video and you're stumbling around using the new quick app authoring or quick start experience or quick database constructor or the fantastically uh, awesome sesame street builder whatever they're calling it because um, the names change 
in different spots, right? They got to pick one name. But if you do that and you have issues and you're confused and you're talking in the video and I'm confused, finish the video up, post it to some place and I'll get the link and download it and then I will shoot it directly to the engineering team at Claris. So that is that. So today's broadcast is all about advanced pro code level gear. This, so this is the advanced stuff today. It's the deep end of the pool, the deep end of the pool. And so uh, that's why Moki's back. He wants to see Kyle Williams demonstrate SQL, ODBC or whatever, and uh, JSON and custom functions, right? And so today is what, web viewers, Kyle Williams, what are you doing today? Uh, so, so today I do have a, a bunch of demos. There's four demos. Uh, um, so I'm covering the uh, Quill demo, a Tiny MCE demo, Summer Note demo, and a CK Editor demo. Um, so let me share my screen and uh, we'll get started. Okay, so yeah, I got into rich text editors because I was trying to integrate in uh, HTML email uh, features. Um, so I have a, a feature in our program that we use every day that creates HTML emails, which allows you to add multiple attachments and send everything uh, uh, in an HTML format so that you can format your emails and have rich text in it. Um, so that got me started exploring all these rich, rich text editors that are available. Um, so with Quill, I was kind of playing around with this, and this is actually one of Claris's add-ons, um, but I wanted to add different font sizes. So Claris's add-on doesn't have all these font sizes. Uh, and then I was also trying to add in uh, some different fonts, which apparently I don't have in this demo. Um, so I was trying to add different fonts and different font sizes. And then uh, as I was working with this, I, I started noticing that uh, there's a bug in here that if you have a colored heading like this, it's blue or some other color, and you put an apostrophe in here, and then uh, if you put it, so I'm just going to hit the space bar here, and that entire top row of text disappears. So I can re-demonstrate that again. I put a button here just so I can demonstrate that again. So it's space bar, and it's gone. So I'm like, well, that's a huge bug. I don't want to have to deal with that. Um, so I was kind of exploring what causes that bug, and um, so I got into here, and I found if I change the text to black, it doesn't do it anymore. So it has something to do with it being blue or any other color, really, because if I highlight this and do, say, purple instead, that problem still exists. Uh, so really big issue, and there's also other issues I found with the Quill demo. Like if I highlight all of this and I go to change it to a green background, what just happened? It just deselected all that text and suddenly I can't do anything. So I'm like, okay, well, that's not good either. Um, and this is, see, there it did something. But uh, so this was kind of a, a huge issue for me because if somebody wants to, to work with this, th there's some huge bugs here. It's not, it's not doing what I wanted to do. Um, so you know, there I can do bold, but when I go to change the color, there it worked. <laughs> so uh, just there, there's definitely some bugs here. So I'm just kind of putting together a list of pros and cons. Um, so uh, so some of the pros is as you type here, you can see it automatically updates the HTML text to show everything I just typed. So you know, there's the text I just threw in there. Um, so this will save as you type, which I really like. Not all rich text editors have that feature. Um, so text uh, save as you type. Uh, toolbar is really easy to customize. Um, so that gets into the script. And if I go into the script here, there's a uh, oh, toolbar font sizes. So here I've customized the font sizes. Real um, quick, Kyle, there is a question on Discord. Sure. Um, from Moki, did you end up using that skeleton key file for HTML email? Uh, so I'm actually using one that's, uh, i trying to remember who produced it. Uh, a slant, I think, created the one that I'm using currently. Um, but the skeleton uh, one is pretty much the same. They, they work the same, so that's why I didn't use theirs. Okay, um, I'm, I'm confused. They're, they're both so, over so, SMTP. So the, the sample file is a Salient sample file? Is that what we're saying here? Uh, so I am not demonstrating HTML emails. That is just what got me into this path, looking at all these different text editors. 
Ah. So that, that's what started me down this path of exploring what text editors are available and how I can use those in my uh, emailing program. So and that, that's what got started, got me started on this. Um, so here you can see that the toolbar is easily customizable with Quill Editor, which I like. And you can put a placeholder text in it. And um, then there's a couple different themes, Snow or Bubble, which uh, Bubble is you don't see the toolbar until you highlight some text. Um, and then Snow is it, it's always there at the top of the screen. Um, but uh, did, did you okay. have a question? I, I, I do. Uh, so real quick, because I'm slow and there, I think about other people around my skill level in the discussion. Um, I know it's more intermediate, but still like, what did you use to, is this a custom function? Is it just pure JSON? Is it a web viewer that you're using in order to do the HTML email? Oh, right. Like, um, so yeah, it's using a, a web viewer for integration. <clears throat> and that web viewer uh, then populates a field that you use for your HTML email. Uh, but then there's also uh, the plain text, with the, which is what the user can see. Well, the, the user sees the uh, web viewer, um, but it all, this also supports uh, showing you plain text, too, as you're typing. All right, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to pause and intervene here for a second. So you, Kyle, you're going about 1,000 miles an hour. This is all great, but I need to bring everyone yeah, back on the same page. It's a lot so. to cover. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you just you just jumped uh, about forty five minutes into a presentation, um, and we're at the beginning. So, let me briefly reframe this so people understand what's going on here. So, the short version of what's happening. So, Kyle saw a sample file from Saliant. Um, it could be from other people too, but Claris theoretically. And I'm gonna say this theoretically because I'm not sure I have a lot of trust in it myself at the moment. Um, has the ability to send HTML emails out of the product. Is it reliable? I don't know. About every time you try to interact with their uh, technology, um, you get a Windows compatibility issue with some of the integrations and stuff. We spent a lot of time this week fighting with that. So assuming that you trust FileMaker to send an HTML email reliably, then the question is you need to format the email. It's important to understand when you're sending out an email, if you construct the email properly and fully, you will send in that email, the HTML email, you'll send a block of code in the, and you don't, people don't see all this. They see one or the other. Your HTML email goes out with HTML code. So we would come out with this stuff over here. And then if Kyle, if you'd be so kind, press the text button. It also sends in the same email, the plain text version. And so both versions are contained in the email if done correctly. Now, frequently, Everyone doesn't do it correctly. I don't always do it correctly. But the point is you would have HTML and plain text. And so then it goes through the internet whoosh, with these two pieces going together. And then it gets to the person's machine and their machine goes, oh, I can only do plain text. And it reads that. Or it can only do HTML or it can do HTML so it upgrades to that. So it has a choice of which one to display. You can get into situations where this happens to me, where someone sends just the HTML and it go, uh, goes somewhere and they can't read the HTML and so they get a blank email message, right? So understand that the reason the text is important, I don't know if it's incorporated in the Saline demo or not, but theoretically you would shoot both the HTML ver version of it and the plain text at the same side. So he's exploring these because he wants to format the HTML beautifully in advance of shooting it through the Saline send email demo does that make sense so that's how we kind of got to okay Moki, you're way off topic right so i don't know what to tell you on that uh, <laughs> uh yeah it sends email over smtp servers so it, uh, you can use your gmail account uh, you do have to set up your gmail account to be able to send the email uh through and uh, well it's actually remember what they call it well well what um, it used to be is less secure app or something yeah, the way it used to work is that you just pass the username and password, and it's getting to the point now where you have to authenticate and have a token on your side. And they're kind of switching to that, uh, Gmail switching to that. There's been a – was a hard day. Once again, this is more of a Jacob Taylor conversation. That's why I don't want to get into it too deeply. He can give you more color on this. But the, the technical requirements of sending e – uh, that's not what today's conversation is about. Today's conversation about is uh, – is about uh, formatting the HTML and, and, the, and the options for formatting that. But sending it out, I'm framing it, we're doing it, right? So right. Um, if we want to have a conversation about sending out SMTP or whatever you want to do or IMAP, 
uh, through FileMaker. We'll get Jacob Taylor back over here, and that's a conversation we would have him involved with. So, okay, uh, you got some some other pros and cons of this. Uh, so here you can do uh, you can create a, a link. Um, so I have quill.js here, but if you don't have this part and you just have quill. Uh, quilljs.com and you try to save that it's going to show about blank it's not going to save it so you go to edit it and you get about blank so you have to have the https uh, you have to have the whole address in there in order for it to save oh well so yeah that, that's kind of another pro or another con i mean is you have to specifically enter in HTTPS for it to save through your uh, hyperlink. Um, so let's go ahead and move on to our next demo here. Uh, so I didn't really like that, so I was trying to some different ones. Uh, Summer Note is another free one. Uh, so I, I put the, the URL on there of where to go to get started. And um, this also has uh, uh, hyperlinks that you can add in here. Uh, it has a, a fairly clean, easy to use interface. Um, there's a lot of uh, different formats here. If I want to put a quote or code in here, I can have that right here. Um, so some pretty easy controls here that I liked. Uh, it's all WYSIWYG. It means what you see is what you get. Um, it's all open source. So I, I can go in here and I can change the size to really big, which works. I can change it to black. Um, so one of the things that didn't work in the Quill uh, demo is you know background color, text color. See, I, I didn't lose focus that time. Um, also, I should be able to just do undo several times and it'll undo everything. So I really like that as well. Um, so when trying to use summer note, I kept having to deal with this issue right here where it has this little handle here. I couldn't really get rid of it. Um, and it, uh, sometimes as I was typing, I, I got into here and I couldn't get below this a block of uh, text here because it was using the code um, the, the, this code element here so because I used that all of a sudden I couldn't scroll down below it and so it's having a really hard time getting below it uh, there's definitely some issues with this um, so I, I put a list of uh, pros and cons again here to kind of guide us through it uh, so yeah there was an issue with uh, tables so if I Go in here, open up a spot. And so I do like that they have this and it automatically expands, uh, which allows you to easily add that. Uh, one of the issues I was having is as you typed, it kept expanding and contracting the cells, which was a real pain. I was able to modify the JavaScript to get rid of that feature. So it just kept the field width static. Um, and then there's uh, issues. Um, so I don't know if I'm going to get into all the code, but I put some notes in here about adding margin auto for uh, for centering your text, for centering the table, because um, the table is going full screen here. So in order to edit the table, I had to actually go in here and modify. See, I think I had a demo in here. So yeah, here's where I was testing with the table and trying to get it to align in the center of the screen. Uh, there's no way to do that uh, using their UI, I had to actually go in here and um, so text align center, I think, margin. So I had to add the margin here, margin auto. So if that margin auto wasn't there, um, and I think width 50% was another thing I had to add in there. And load, so there it's going full screen. So you have to actually edit the HTML code in order to get it to be centered and not take up the whole width of the screen. Um, so I thought that was kind of a pain too. So I put in there some instructions on how to do that, but we don't really want the user to have to know how to code. So that's kind of a deal breaker for me. Um, all of these I did enable read only. Um, so I didn't demonstrate with that with the quill, but you can do that here as well. Um, so again, this one had a lot of pros and cons and um, also, I was noticing that with images, I was trying to get the text to wrap around this image, and it doesn't really do it. it this row is the entire height of the image. Um, there's no way to really have multiple lines of 
text around that image. Yeah. This, this, so, yeah, there's limitations of what you can do. I mean, this used to be like Microsoft Word was really bad like that. It wouldn't wrap and do things like that. And I'm talking yeah. 10, 15 years ago, right? So, yeah, or 20 years ago. But the point is, is that this is basic text editing. It's not basically what I would call pre-press, right? Which is this really old term for page layout and <laughs> like that. And so um, getting an image to wrap around, you actually have to use well, have a site or use a CSS uh, programmer, coder, web design guy to build a template for you that you thread the data into, right? So like the emails yeah. that we send out, we have text that images and wrap and does this and that and the other thing. And it's always a hassle to get that in there. It's pretty hard to get that visually. I mean, I guess there would be. I mean, you could pay money for a good editor. Is, is there a premium, a premium paid editor? Are these all free? Yeah, so these are free so far. I'm going to get into the, the paid editors next. Um, so I continued my experimentation. Uh, this is the first of the paid editors. It's just a demo version of it. Um, so there, there's definitely some uh, drawbacks to using this one. So one is uh, domain is not registered. You have to re uh, host this on a server. You have to register your domain with Tiny Cloud. Uh, and then there's a link here to go to that to get that approved. Um, so that's kind of annoying. Uh, the other issues I found is like, uh, let me just go to uh, a new record here. So as I'm typing here, you can see it only did a, the first couple of letters and then it stopped saving it. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, but if I hit the enter key, it saves it. I can do the enter key a bunch of times and it saves it. If I delete all those enters and I delete all this text, it's not saving it. So I have not been able to figure out how to get it to save as you type, uh, but I can't. I did put save buttons on here so you can save and you can load from the, the HTML down here. So if I type a bunch of stuff there and I say load, then it can populate. Um, but uh, also if I, if I select out of it and then I select back into it, you can see it saves it. But because it doesn't save as you type, it's kind of a deal breaker for me because um, I, I don't want to do this and go to the other record and lose everything I just typed. Um, so, see, it comes with the, uh, so yeah, it does have a lot of features, which I liked. There's, uh, you got your bullets, your numbers. There's a selection for different types of letters, uh, different types of bullets. So um, you have to so purchase the license. How much is the license to purchase? Uh, so there, there is a free license. Um, Maybe, but do you uh, still have to register it for that and, and set the don domain and all that? Or? Yeah. Yeah. So th this isn't registered. This is actually separate. Uh, it's offline. So kind of had to hack it to do that. But <laughs> uh, again, uh, that's why I put the notification on here that it's for demonstration purposes only. Uh, please purchase a license before you try using this. But also it's kind of a deal breaker that it doesn't save as you type. So you can see here there is the free free forever plan of uh, which this would demo would fall under. Um, and then you can pay extra for better features, uh, better service. Well, yeah, but what about wrapping? Okay. So I feel like I'm working in Microsoft word version two or three, right? Um, yeah, exactly. Can you, can you wrap? Cause if the image can't wrap, then this is a giant, I mean, it's great for a, a letter, but it's a giant pile of <laughs> for anything more than a letter. Right. So can, right. does it not offer a, a, ra a image wrapping capability or not really? Uh, let's find out. Let's see if I, is it going to put it? No. Um, image. Source. Yeah. So this is not very intuitive. <laughs> uh, source. How do I add an image? Uh, so I, I tried dragging and dropping. So here I got a file, mm -hmm. and I try to drop it. It doesn't do anything. Okay. Uh, so, again, that's kind of a deal breaker as well. Um, it's like I can't seem to add an image. Uh, it says insert. How do I do it? Insert page one. Oh, so right. you well, can insert okay. from a URL. Yeah, that's so, so Moki, right, Moki's pointing out. So basically you have to train people to post an image <laughs> somewhere right somewhere on some system somewhere however they do that then take the link and like for example let me find let me go find an image over here i have 
Uh, oh, there's an image, right? Well, yeah, they can uh, see if that'll work. See if that'll work. See if that'll work. Oh, not copy image. Uh, address, image address. Yeah, there you go. Now put that uh, in there and see what it does. There it is. Okay, so now make so it beautiful. Cool. It looks like. How, how do we? Make yeah, it, it just it, again the whole line has the same exact problem. Okay, no, 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 stop. I'm I'm telling you that's not acceptable. So I'm asking you. Right. Is there a option to make it acceptable, or, or am I literally dealing with Microsoft Word from, from <clears throat> from like when Bill Gates was actually the CEO and gave it, which is like twenty years ago? <laughs> yeah, th th this is definitely a, a, another deal breaker for me because nobody's going to want to deal with this ah. if you can't type and do multiple lines and word wrap around the. Okay, so the so image. right, can you right click on the image? And, oh, that didn't work. How about you? How do you no. click? There's no tools to be able to word wrap. Um, Can you select? Uh, that's what user docs, Google images, right? Click copy URL. Yeah. Right. So once again, yeah. I'm trying to, I'm trying to frame this, right? I feel like, I feel like literally I've gone back to. <laughs> it's such an appropriate image for this. <laughs> it's like, really? it's like I've gone back to 1991, 92. I had a Mac plus. And I moved up to an LC. I had a, a Mac Plus and then a LC in 90, 91 color. And I remember using Word and just hating this kind of thing. Yeah. And, and the way to get around it was to use, people say, oh, just use PageMaker. Just use PageMaker. Right. And I'm <laughs> like, uh, yeah. So, yeah, it's the same problem with the 4.2 version. Okay. Uh, <laughs> so. I have a question. So, do any of the, uh, the text editors support an image that doesn't look like that? Uh, that's going to be our next one. So yes, there is one that supports images that you can do. So you're yeah, making me suffer right now. You're making me exactly. <laughs> yeah, that, that's for my uh, you know the final hurrah here. Okay, so this one, uh, this one I found lots of great things. You can have an image here. Uh, so you know, there's lots of tools here. I can put it off to the side. Oh. Uh, oh. Also. Um, oh. Oh wait, wait, back up. This is called Kyle CK Editor. Did you build write this yourself, or you just? Uh, it's a demo. It's using the CK Editor. Uh, so I got a little hyperlink here. So the product uh, is so... called CK Editor, not Kyle. So if I do a search for Kyle CK Editor, it's going to be like. Eh. <laughs> uh, it's my FileMaker demo. Uh, how to in yeah. integrate that into FileMaker. Uh, okay. uh, so there's there's a whole bunch of documentation. I put a link there. Uh, you can also insert. Uh, caption underneath the image um and it is possible to resize but i don't know why it's not letting me right now uh, uh, it's because i'm alive i think <laughs> i have a question um so how much is this uh so this is free uh this is their free version i there have a question why did you even bother us showing us the last one if this is free and it doesn't suck <laughs> Why did you show us the one that cost money that sucked? To put things into perspective. Oh, cause... my God. It's like an <laughs> educational moment. Yeah. So, again, I can insert. Maybe this will let me resize. There we go. So, now I can resize it. I can put it in line with the text. I can edit a oh. caption underneath. <laughs> All right, Margaret, I'm going to have to – we're going to have to, like, have, like, a, a warning on the broadcast that the first part of the broadcast will be – uh, torturous and hell on and living hell on earth, and then and then you just dial into the last ten minutes to find out what Kyle really thinks what we should use, right? So painful, yeah. painful. <laughs> this can even no, wait, 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 wait. Now Moki says make that a URL. Not good link. for HTMLs. Always use tables and cells. Is it using tables and cells, or what is it doing? Do you know? Okay, so what Moki uh, what Moki's talking about is uh, when you're putting images into an HTML email. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually has to be classified as an inline email or inline image, I mean. And uh, you have to use a reference to the attachment. Mm -hmm. So HTML emails, it's a little bit tricky. Um, so this is great for editing text for to be able to have this on your layout. Um, so I think that's really cool. Uh, but that is kind of a limitation of HTML emails is that you have to you have regular attachments and you have inline attachments. And if you have an inline attachment like this, you have to make a reference to it. And before you can set it up to be able to send it out, uh, there, there's some programming that has to be done. Mm. 
Um, so it has to be just a reference to it. It can't be a, a base 64 image. Um, so this does show the source of the image. Okay. Um, so this might actually work uh, because it's not base 64 and it's not really an attachment. It's just a URL to it. So this might actually work in a, a HTML email. Mm -hmm. But what he's talking about is uh, normally if you have a PNG or a JPEG file and you put it onto your editor, it's going to be all base 64 and that's not going to work with most email applications. Uh, most email applications, you have to do a reference to uh, an attachment. So the attachment is separate from your HTML. And then it just has image source and then the IDs. So it's a CID uh, to your image attachment. Uh, so that, that's a whole nother discussion. Um, maybe I'll come back another day and we'll discuss HTML emails and uh, those kind of hangups. Um, so I think this should actually work because it's the link, not. Why don't you uh, mail it? Mail it to someone. I don't know. Let's see me mail it to someone. <laughs> um, Can you mail it, or are you all talk and no walk? Is that what this is? I'm just trying to. Okay. Well, I mean, you tortured I, us, and now I'm not going to be very nice. So I mean, let me see if I have any email. Uh, your, mail. Let's see I if mail I can get this to. I have to go into the actual application here, and hopefully I don't. Oh, yeah. The, oh, there it went. Hang on. Uh, oh, sorry. Let me uh, make sure I'm not putting anything bad on the <laughs> online here. Uh, so excuse me while I Yeah, see, this is like HTML the emails that we sent, right? So we put the image along there, right? So you see how we do so, that. And that's a self thing, right? So are you not going to send it to me? <sighs> uh, okay. What, what's your address? Um, uh, I'm at uh, RC Mobile at rcconsulting.com. It's a test account. RC Mobile. Uh huh. At uh, rcconsulting.com. RC. RC. Yeah, it's two C's there in the RC Consulting, right? Yeah, two C's. CC. Yeah. C. All right. We're going to send it to us. We're all excited here. We're, all right. We're lying. So, uh, Wait. Rest and... Oh, this is summer note that I Ooh, have Alpha here. Coburn has a question. Um, <laughs> okay, we'll get to the second. Okay, so he said, he, said he's, he used the W word. That's like saying the F word on um, TV. <laughs> All right, so let's try control A copy. Did it go? I'm just gonna paste this into the HTML portion, <gasps> and then uh, let's see if that sends. Mm -hmm. Send. So I don't know if you're going to get that or how that's going to turn out. Al Coburn says, I've had issues with getting rich text to print to a PDF file. Is this add-on designed for HTML email only? Any recommendations for printing uh, RTF on a report? Uh, and, of course, he promptly says, I'm using WebDirect only. A lot of things are limited in WebDirect. Uh, there's a lot of layering of objects issues. Um, one, one of my tricks with web viewers is uh, sometimes I'll put an object in front of the web viewer so that way you don't see a, the white flash and then as it's loading um, and then I'll hide that object so that way you can interact with it and you don't see the white flash when you're loading your layout but that wouldn't work in web direct because of the layering issues um, we're all looking at your email <laughs> right now so it Oh, uh, was, so was, was, your, it, was, your, was your image supposed to wrap or not? Was it did it was it supposed to wrap or not wrap? Because it, it, it ain't uh, wrapping at all. The dog. I mean, it doesn't oh. it doesn't look okay, this doesn't look like it, but we did have certain expectations it would wrap the dog. Yeah, it's kind of open. There's no doggy um, wrap. Huh. All right. Well, that's I mean, oh, well, clearly it, it's still, it made it into the email. So that's huge. Yeah. I mean, it's not hideous, right? So, right. Moki says, always include a link to embedded HTML page of your email for people who have corporate or other super strict email where all images are stripped or don't show automatically. See, tables, 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 right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Moki just uh, talks smack to you, Kyle. He's calling <laughs> you out. Argentine says, I save the email in a FM record and include as a backup and link to a PHP file that will display the email. Yeah, that's the other. You always see email saying, if you're having a hard time reading this email, press here and it goes to the actual uh, Yeah, so page. the table did show up. I, I have a table at the bottom. So the table shows up properly. Um, I hadn't gotten to that part yet, but you see I got into the pros and cons. And at the bottom, I was playing around with the table editor. Mm. Uh, so that you can you can actually merge cells with this, which you mm. couldn't do with the other ones. 
Uh, you can format individual cells. You can mm. have a header row mm. on top of your table. Mm. These are all things that you couldn't do with all the other editors. Uh, you can also have better control over the width of everything. Um, so, okay, so we're back on my screen. Yeah, you're talking. I didn't realize yeah. we're on your screen. We were, we're, uh, so, we're, we're yeah, examining there's... your dead dog. Yeah, no, oh, there we go. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we can uh, split cells up. We can merge cells. Uh, there's all the cell properties, your cell width, the, the background of your individual cells, your border of your individual cells, and text alignments. It's all there. Uh, so and there's controls for the whole entire table as well. So these are table properties instead of cell properties. Uh, you can manually type in your color. So if it's not in their list here, because they only have a limited selection here. Um, I don't know if... Uh, Let's try. Oh, well, that's maybe uh, I'll try uh, three, three, three. Huh? There it is. So, so Moki said I've been doing sure HTML emails work. forever. Must have. Also, if marketing was included, unsubscribe link. Yes, 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 yes. People love to unsubscribe from us, and then they yeah. download the free starting <laughs> point, and they get the sad dog uh, web page, which is kind of funny. So. Um, yeah. So of all the editors, this was definitely by far my favorite. Uh, so there is one of the cons is you can't just insert an image. That's how they make their money. That's how they get you to sign up and pay for it uh, because it requires, they have a plugin called CK Finder. Uh, so I put a link here. Um, and so you have to have the CK Finder uh, integrated into it in order to be able to just drag and drop images directly into this. Um, so... Uh, it does work with URL images, obviously. Um, so unless you want to pay for the, the full version, you kind of have to stick with uh, the URL emails or images, I mean, in order for um, in order for it to work. Uh, which uh, directly embedding images doesn't work with HTML emails, so it's probably better to use a URL anyway. Um, so I don't really see a problem with that. Um, Oh, so table column widths. Uh, that was one problem I found with the, the summer node is if I inserted a table. And so it just puts a table in there and then I start typing. It'll expand the different cells to fit the text. Um, so that could be a pro or con, depending on your um, what you think of that. Uh, it is possible to hard to change that like I did with summer notes so it doesn't just keep enlarging the, the sell forever and ever um but I, I haven't gotten into all of that javascript that's <laughs> getting into really advanced stuff um, but i think as is this works pretty well um, so you can have a header column you can have a header row uh, which you can't really do with any of the other text editors um, yeah i think this is the winner so i'm not i'm not sure yeah. why didn't we just skip to the end with this one so. <laughs> it's because i want to put things into perspective if I just showed you this right away, it'd be like, oh, this is great. Okay, we're done. <laughs> so, this way you get to kind of put things in a perspective. You get to see what the other editors can and can't do and why the CK editor is actually as good as it actually is. Uh, so, yeah, so let me help out a little bit. So I want to go back to Alpha Cobra 73. I had this question about getting rich text to print to a PDF file. So with WebDirect. So understanding the issue with WebDirect is that the, 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 the WebDirect user, the person who's sitting there next to you, right, or the person who's doing in the web browser, in WebViewer, and they say print a PDF or whatever, they're going to print anything, doesn't matter, HTML or print a picture. They're not printing, they don't print anything, right, unless you actually do a screenshot or you print out of the browser. If you're in FileMaker and you run a script to telling it to print, you're telling the server to print, right? So... The server has to do the print job, which means the server needs to have the fonts you need installed upon it. Uh, most servers mm -hmm. don't have a lot of fonts installed, especially a Windows server, especially, especially, especially a Linux server. So if you want fonts, you need to install those fonts, make sure FileMaker server can see those fonts, whatever that entails. But um, and then keep in mind that that's all sandboxed pretty heavily. And so the the web server for the most part uh, but the browser for sure is super sandbox so it can only save to a specific location it can't just go everywhere right so 
Uh, that's some tricky stuff with that, right? It's something to consider, right, about setting this up and understanding where the print job actually occurs. In the old days, like when we talked about robots and stuff, we still use robots, but in the old days, we'd actually have the robots run print jobs for us and potentially kick out paper to a printer if that was something. I don't have that currently, but or you could have it kick out a PDF and email to people, right, things like that. So that way you have a copy of Pro running doing the legwork for that, right? Does that make sense? So that's one way around kind of this limitation, either the FileMaker server limitation or the WebDirect limitation, which is the server. So you can't get around it. It's a hack, but you wanted to use WebDirect and understand whenever you use WebDirect, you're going to promptly try. I have this conversation Tuesday with my junior staff because they kept running around promising. It says, oh, can, can WebDirect you know, run plugins and take us to the take us to the moon and and do all this sort of stuff. And can it run on electric power and is it have a nuclear battery? And, and all they goes, yeah, 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 yeah. And the road to hell is paved with the customer asking you about WebDirect and you saying yes. Okay, um, don't do it. So, um, and if you want to say yes, then understand you're going to have to have a very elaborate process to compensate for the limit, the, the product's limitations, right? So. Uh, so something else I didn't point out is that there's actually a checkbox here. I don't know if you can see it on the screen, but uh, so th this is kind of cool. None of the other uh, editors offered that, so you can add a to-do list here. You can just type in a bunch of stuff, and you can just go down the list and check it all off. Uh, so that's kind of cool. Okay, very nice. So. Very, very, very nice. Um, all right. Well, uh, I don't have anything more at the moment. It is Friday. We are kind of thinking about landing. Rick Fosnot. Nope, nothing there. Um, so. Uh, so Moki's asking about where to get the CK editor. Uh, so I did email all of the demos to RCC uh, at the support email. Uh, yes. So, yeah, th this is uh, their free version without any of the uh, paid plugins. Um, so this is all open source. Uh, so yeah, with the uh, paid plugin, they have a bunch of different uh, options here. Um, so CK Finder allows you to easily drag and drop images. Uh, Easy Image is the same thing. Those are both the same. Uh, export to PDF and Word. Uh, I'm not sure how that works with FileMaker, but be interested to try that out. Um, Spell check and grammar checking. This already kind of does that. So if I, oh, okay. <laughs> so you can add that feature in there. Um, I'm not sure what math type is. You can add comments. You can work it in, in a team environment and comment to each other. Um, track changes. You can audit log it. Uh, and then revision history. I'm not sure what that is either. But uh, yeah, check out their website and see what else it can do. Um, yeah, we'll have to look at doing this and maybe putting this in a new starting point. We'll have to kick this around a little bit. All right. um, the trick is you just want something that's not going to cause problems and be pretty reliable. Um, yeah. And well, so, this is definitely the most reliable one I've seen. Yeah. So yeah. that's the other reason I wanted to show the other ones and what the problems were I found with all of those. And pretty much none of those problems exist here. So I, if I change the color, it changes. <laughs> So, again, that was a summer note issue. Uh, I can change the text. It doesn't lose the focus. It's still all selected. Uh, and there, there's it also has the numbers and the Roman numerals and the letters, all the different options. And then it also has a to-do list, which is really cool. Um, there's also special characters. So if I want to throw a back oh, icon like in that. there, I can do that. I like that. So all of that's available here. Uh, there's arrows. Where's there's, the one uh, that's a pile of poo poo? Oh wait a minute, that's an emoji, right? The big pile of doo, -doo so, with face on it. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I don't know if there's an emoji one. Maybe they're oh, going to add the that. Oh look at the half. Hey, hey, go go to three quarters. I like three quarters. Go to three quarters. Uh, Down there, math. You're in math. The left, math. left. Three three over four. Oh right, right. Yeah. yeah. I make it bigger. So that's that's can another challenge. How, how big can you make a? How big can you make it? Um, so apparently that's the huge way 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 so the other <laughs> uh, the other one the other demo we had had you could pick a font size and now we're back to like like 
tiny, jumbo, enormous, slightly enormous, smoky size. I'm, I'm sure this is customizable. Uh, so I, I just haven't uh, gotten that deep into God. it. I'm still, so I, the, I explored ones, all the other ones as deep uh, as I could. And this one I just got started on uh, two weeks ago, <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Uh, but I'm sure this is customizable. I'm sure there's a way if you search the forums, you can find a way to get actual font numbers in here. Uh, so that, that's just going to take a little bit of extra work, a little extra coding. But um, I'm sure it's possible. So, All right. Well, uh, <laughs> yeah, I just don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, as far as free uh, rich text editors, this is definitely the winner for me. It's not too bad. Okay, great. Well, I like uh, – because I want to have platform nine and three quarters, and that's very important to me. So. <laughs> there um, you go. All right. Well, um, I've already built that editor into my workflow. Right on. So we're back to really again. Here we go. The Oregon Dean. <laughs> Oregon really? Dean, Oregon Dean weans the. <laughs> normally, it, it used to be Ellen was the biggest problem, and then, then, then Ruben started posting naked guys wearing diapers, <laughs> and then that really derailed things, and then then that encouraged Ken, and, but Oregon Dean wins the uh, the clean image meme of the day. Kyle, good job, good job, right, thank you, good job, good job. All right, everyone, yes, yes. Asta. All right. Have a great weekend, everyone. Happy Fourth of July. More importantly, great job up front protecting this quarterback to give you a chance. And that's all you can ask for. Trying to rally down 10. 9.25 to go here in the fourth. Short motion by Amendola from the left. Brady takes the shot. Step. Stands in, throws it left for Amendola. Reaches up and snaps a high throw and lands inside the 10. Rolling to the 9. Oh. Slightly behind him. Again, he makes the grab.